All right, I'm making this video for uh, outdoor power extreme equipment. High performance clutch leader. That's extremeope.com. Uh, so I just wanted to uh, give a quick walk around what I did here. This is my uh, milling machine. And uh, I put the extreme clutch on there. I'll have you say that it is, uh, it, it's amazing. Um, it's nice to be able to turn the blade on and off right here, um, electrically. Also, I have that same system tied into my e-stop. So I hit that, not only do I lose the clutch, it kills the uh, fuel to the carburetor at the same time. So it's a great safety feature rather than having a mechanical clutch that in an emergency or whatever, you know, you got to lift this up or delatch this and then move something. Uh, one button kills everything. So uh, tech support was awesome because this is a custom rig. Um, this lawnmower engine came off of a, a John Deere tractor and I wasn't sure if it was the original motor on the tractor. Whatever tech support was very helpful because it had an electric clutch on it in the past, but it didn't have one on it when I took it off the tractor. So I really wasn't sure what I was missing. Um, but here it is all set up. Um, I ended up with a welding a hardened steel bolt on the other side with a plate per their recommendation. It does have a little movement back and forth like they told me to leave. And then I was able to find a hardened steel washer don't assume guys call tech support email them they're really helpful i uh originally made the washer so it fit up in the uh here and was actually putting tension on the wrong piece but just to be safe before i even started the engine i contacted them with a short video and they were able to give me guidance on the right direction and how to do it and i added a tensioner pulley over here just basically keeps the belt a little tension. Um, I did make a mistake on this. I had the tensioner puller on the power side. So every time the engine revved up or it was under a little torque, it was jumping horrendously. So now I have it on the, uh, the outgoing side so it doesn't move near as much. But here in a second, I'm gonna fire up the uh, uh, machine and do a little milling. Uh, if you want to have a little giggle, I was looking for some cheap 100 millimeter skateboard wheels just as a guard for my oiler here. And little did I know, they light up. So that's kind of a little bit goofy. But anyway, I got a double oiler here. One goes into the bar. And this one here is kind of custom and it just drops a little bit of oil on the outside of the chain. Anyway, I'm sure y'all want me to stop talking and get the melon. So wish me luck here. I'm gonna go ahead and put you in the uh, stand here. And I got a light set up. And give you a first hand view. I'm gonna lower this camera down seeing that this video is basically um, talking about the clutch. So let's see the clutch work and not everything else. Let me lower this tripod just a little bit. Sorry, I should have had this done in advance. But as they say, hindsight's 2020. All right. I think we're level. I think you can see the clutch operation and the blade operation. So I'm going to fire the machine up. It's going to get a little noisy, so uh, now would probably be a good time to turn your volume down just a little bit. Not too bad, but it is a fair bit noisy. Here we go.
want to demonstrate that e-stop because that is like an important feature to be able to kill that engine instantly like that uh, which disengages the clutch as well as the motor simultaneously um, also I don't know if you noticed when I was putting the wedges in it's nice to be able to uh, pop that clutch button and be able to uh, um, stop it to be able to put those wedges in but she does a mighty fine job that's the board there uh, and like I said this thing I've been building it there's no plans or whatever it was just kind of a, a little bit of a time <laughs> 